Hello and my warmest greetings to all stereo and multi-channel sound lovers. Some of you might pay attention how I managed in one sentence to combine stereo and multi-channel sound, because those are two different instances. What I mean by this are the different requirements for room acoustical treatment for stereo and home cinema. For example, for home cinema there are different standards like Dolby, THX and the basis of those standards is the low reverberation, room reverberation. I'll tell a bit later what for. However, for stereo sound the regular studio reverberation standards apply or sometimes unofficially it can be said that a little bit higher reverberation rate also might suit stereo sound. For example, if we have a room of around 20-30 square meters, the regular reverberation time for a home cinema would be around 0.2 seconds for the whole uh, range of frequencies. However, for, for the stereo sound, this would not be beneficial. In such case, we'll just be hearing two speakers without the so-called virtual sources of sound, the dimension and so on. So the sound will be linked only to speakers, to two speakers. That's why you won't hear a good stereo sound in a home theater, in a home cinema. Because you have the right channel, the left channel, but somehow in your brain it won't be connected one to another, and we won't get a good stereo sound. Then what to do with such low resonance time in, in home cinema when the source is linked to the speakers and the sound loses its dimension and weight. And in home cinema we have at least five speakers. It's front, rear and sides. And there are also standards as Dolby Atmos when there are 11 and so on channels. So when there's a lot of channels, we get the volume, the space. So by increasing the number of speakers, we, we try to create the, the space and so on, the dimension. So the more speakers we have in our home cinema, the more we can dampen the space. So my idea of creating the room acoustic treatments is that we make the accent on the diffusion, not the damping, but the diffusion. There's a lot of in the network videos from different companies which are making installations for home cinemas. So what do they do? Let's see. Let's imagine a room from a concrete or bricks. So they do the lathing, fill it with mineral wool, and then put several 2D Schroeder diffusers, several of them. They do it by means of the calculators. They put, for example, the materials of the wool of the walls as bricks, for example. So, and the dampening material is mineral wool. Then the calculator shows the data and the reverberation data. They add additional mineral wool. The graph gets down. Then when the reverberation is extremely low, for example, if you make the whole room with mineral wool, even the multi-channel sound will die. 
So they add additional 2D Schroeder diffusers add to this and the graph gets a little bit higher on the higher frequencies. So how the mineral wool works? It absorbs low frequencies good, uh, not so good, then middle frequencies good, and then higher frequencies not so good. So it absorbs damps lower middle frequencies. So then, for example, if the rever rever reverberation time is two seconds on one kilohertz, however, on high frequencies, uh, the graph goes down. So we don't hear any reverberation there. We just hear the direct sound. As I said, the mineral wool absorbs higher frequencies really good. So in such rooms, there's a lack of such diffusers as such. Well, you can still watch a movie in such rooms because you have multi-channel sound. However, if you have stereo in such room, then you'll be just hearing music just from the speakers. It won't be like a stage, there won't be like stage and so on. So such people think that they need a, an additional room for a stereo and so on. So even if you bring other speakers to such room and if you'll adjust everything, all your system, still the room will be dead, the sound will be dead in such room. The higher frequencies will be absorbed, it will be dampened. And even when you enter such a room, you'll feel uncomfortable, you'll feel as if you are underwater. That's why I make an accent on diffusion. And still, it's a special kind of diffusion. The diffusion is made to middle and high frequencies. So the diffuser is called 3D Diffuser 50. So it reflects high frequencies. So the absor absorption coefficient is 002. So almost all high frequency energy it reflects. So it creates a diffusion field, the volume. So we might feel as if we are in a bigger room than we are in, in reality. So there is a space in such diffusers. So those spaces underneath the surface, they absorb the lower middle part of frequencies. So we need to absorb one kilohertz, 500 hertz, for example, mineral wool will also absorb the higher frequencies. However, this diffuser will reflect the high frequencies, but low and middle frequencies, which are reflecting between the walls in the room and ceiling and floor. This diffuser, it absorbs them. And so the third thing that this diffuser can do it can do a, it can act as a bass trap so this if this diffuser is placed upon a special uh, special wall which has a space behind it so and this wall is configured to to reflect the lower frequencies, for example, 150 hertz. So it starts to fluctuate and it starts to re-emit those fluctuations into inside the wall where the dampening material is placed. For example, 125 hertz. Well, it can be configured to other f frequencies. For example, 150 hertz, 200 hertz so it can be configured well uh, the it has to be measured in every particular room i'll talk about the measurements separately i'll talk about the measurements of the room before and after
So a few words more about 3D diffusers. So why are they called 3D diffusers? Because they give the diffusion field in the three-dimensional space horizontally, vertically, and to the front in the z-axis. So when we place them in the spots of first reflections, they give the even field of in the entire room in their working place. So there are different types of diffusers, for example, Skyline, Core D, so 2D Schroeder diffusers. Generally, all of them, if we put them in the place of first reflection point, I mean the side ones and the ceiling ones, they won't work the same way. I'll show you on the example of our rear diffuser, QRD diffuser. This is the QRD diffuser. Now it is placed on the back wall and the sound wave or the front drops on it equally. And it works as it should, as we have calculated in a special software for this particular room so that it would create a diffusion field in the conjunction with the 3D diffusers that are placed on the sides and ceiling. So it is calculated very, very carefully. However, if you would have placed it uh, wrong, for example, on a side wall or a ceiling, for example, then imagine what would have happened. The sound wave comes, it reaches those small pillars, then it reflects and it creates diffusion. However, this pillar still creates diffusion for another small pillar. So then it wouldn't work the same way as we have calculated this. However, it would create a little bit wrong diffusion by the pillars which are inside of it. Yeah, for larger waves it will create and still. However, upper middle would still not reflect correctly. So I'll repeat, it's, it's placed on the back wall, the signal, the front signal is reflected as it should. So in general, I've talked how we talk, how we work with middle and high frequencies, that our basis is the diffusion. Yes, we use some sort of absorption, but that is a limited frequency absorption. For example, the classical Helmholtz diffuser. You must have seen a lot of Helmholtz diffusers, even on my channel when I'm with feature and uh, there's the panels with holes which can be considered as Helmholtz and those diffusers are measured specially for the room of Peter. Here it wouldn't have worked the same way. Here we have concrete walls and then we had a lot of reflections between walls and in the waterfall scale we could see a lot of reflections more than one second from frequencies 250 hertz till 700 hertz and if we would have put the Helmholtz we wouldn't have shortened those and then the room would have given some additional additional hum and additional overtones uh, then the particularity of voice wouldn't have been good in in the cinema in movies then I, that's why i developed the classical helm holds all the holes are of the same height and they are 
configured to have the narrow frequency and please pay attention even especially those who construct helm holds themselves i'll talk how it's uh, working imagine a hole so you and you want to close this hole with some fabric then you have the holes width and its depth and then you get the measurement of the hole based on this but you should know that all the air that is near this hole is also working so and if we cover this hole from another side with some of sort of damping material or fabric then it wouldn't work the same way because the air from another side wouldn't get in, into the resonance a few more words about the base so here we have behind the sofa uh, we have here three section bass trap this bass trap is configured for 57 hertz this frequency there's a lot of this frequency in this room so that's why we have a bass trap here and moreover if we would have put it only on one side then the tail of this overtone of this hum then it wouldn't have gone so easily uh, that's why we've created another bass trap which is placed on the front wall actually there are several bass traps on the front wall and they are working in synchronization with the back one then because if the frequency would have gone to the back wall it would have reflected from the still would have reflected from another bass trap and it wouldn't have returned but if we have two ones then the frequency doesn't manage to reflect and then the waterfall tail becomes really really small so this room uh, looked like this before there were even some sort of home cinema installations here and there was some electrical wiring inside the walls this room is located in a in an apartment building it had more or less good sound dampening so it was logical to use this room as a home cinema or for listening music although there was some problem and the problem is that the wall's length is six meters and the height is three meters which such wall sizes and ceiling you can't get a good base now i'm going to show the acoustical measurements of the of this room before and after the acoustical treatment currently i'm displaying rt60 graph before the acoustical treatment as you could see the room wasn't empty there were two sofas some pillows some curtains and even some books and several speakers of course all those items could uh, absorb sound but still the rt60 graph you could see that it's a bit higher than for such uh, room the rt60 room should be around four and a half seconds the black line on the graph as you could see before the rt60 room is higher so as you could see there were there was a big echo hum in the voice so even talking was not comfortable so for a regular living space we it's good to have until 0 0.4 rt60 and here it's even hard to listen to your partner 
because it was around 60 the reverberation time as for the room you can see as for the music you can see that it's very broken the graph on different frequencies it has different decay times look the bass even goes to one that means to second even more than second that means that the bass modes they are just traveling in the room and then you get this hum uh, there you could see a little room small in that uh, little room you could see the standing waves and there was a very big hum there so and there was this time about one and three seconds so what do usually home cinema installations do they usually put mineral wool on the walls in the best scenario and in the worst case scenario they put the acoustical foam so how the mineral wool works it works from 700 to 800 hertz and then they put the mineral wool so and they then they put more and more and more and when the reverberation time drops they stop and 200 and 300 hertz it will just drop just a little bit so that means uh, the middle frequencies will be just dead so you won't be able even to speak comfortably in such a room and the bass won't, won't benefit from this so and it doesn't work with the reverberation time that means the bass won't work properly as you could see in that small room for example you can get rid of the hum in that little room by any means of equal equalization and now i'll show the reverberation time change after our acoustical treatment look the graph is flat as you can see all frequencies start from high until the low ones they drop at the same time all across the frequency range and in such room you could say that the sound is the most correct one and the atmosphere is the most correct one as you can see the high frequencies are not lowered if we would have used the mineral wool or foam the high frequencies would have dropped but here you can see that the high frequencies and middle frequencies are on the same level it's the same but you could say that okay you can add some high frequencies with Dirac or Equalizer and then you'll have the direct sound from the speakers and here we have the sound from this from the room that means for example when the character in some movie enters a cave you'll hear it you'll hear it the dimension the space and in the stereo you'll hear the ear ear the scene you have the also dimension or of a concert hall for example the high frequencies the middle frequencies and the bass as you could see before the bass went up so it was humming and reflecting now it became as the middle frequency you could say as that with Dirac you could configure this as well no with Dirac you could configure just the spectrum but not the reflecting waves the next one is the impulse characteristics graph here we have all the markers marked but here you can see that we can there was a very slow decay rate in the room so the decay was very very slow for example as a tennis ball it was just decaying with steps so now what we can see after the now you can see the very steep decay of the impulse signal 
here another graph before and after so those parasitics here you can see the waterfall graph before we can see that in the middle there was a, some problems here here we could see some artifacts from the room most probably in between the floor and ceiling most probably because of the wrong room proportions here here and here 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 and in the base so those artifacts couldn't be corrected by any equalizer so if you'll be cutting it with an equalizer uh, this will be of course smaller but the good signal would be also less heard from the speakers so you'll you'll have like a hole in this graph so this part no, lower middle the Helmholtz was configured to to manage those and it was by try and error this done was try and error because it's really hard to to do it so I had to configure all this to get rid of those peaks this is what waterfall graph looks like after the acoustical treatment the middle is ideal the base is has some artifacts but they are not critical so you won't hear them by your ear so below the 30 hertz it's not ideal however our ear cannot hear this quite good so it's that's quite okay why this appeared because the owner changed the speakers they in the beginning they didn't give so much bass later the speakers became more powerful and the speakers start to give more bass but we decided not to do any bass traps on 30 hertz because most probably it will go through subwoofer first for cinema it won't be there and for subwoofers we have dba so this is not very important for for this for cinema the spectrogram can show this more evidently as you can see the higher frequencies were quite low before because of the walls and the sofa the the frequencies looked like this look what was there on the middle and in the base everything was going up uh, this was unacceptable for musical listening or cinema watching and now you can see what became in higher frequencies the diffusion we didn't dampen it but with diffusers we flattened it and then the middle became flat and base also became without those peaks and the 30 hertz region we decided to leave and correct it in dba so coming back to the frequency range in the lower part of the frequency range when the room has minimal standing waves when there are no parasitic resonances and there are, when there are no modes on the frequency range in such room we can do the equalization that means get rid of failures in the frequency range failures for example where the walls of room doesn't help your your system 
Such failures you can get rid of because of the room proportions. And this example, you, you would need the DRAC system. For subwoofers it would be useful to have DBA system. Or you could order special acoustical tr systems that would give you the most the best result. However, here I would tell a few words about the DBA system. It is used to to get rid of the reflections from the back wall of the room. Subwoofers on the front wall are placed in such a way that the wave would be of a cylindrical form. Uh, this would minimize the reflections of the uh, side walls and ceiling. And on the back wall, the subwoofers are placed and connected in the inverted phase. So we put two front subwoofers and two back subwoofers and configured them with some delay with the DBA system. Then we made the frequency range correction, exactly the correction of the frequency range, range in the corrected already treated room that doesn't have parasitical resonances and standing waves. As a result, we got the ideal RT60, ideal waterfall graph, and all frequencies decay at that time when it's needed, so when they should decay. And a very flat fre frequency wage range, thanks to Dirac and subwoofers. So still, no matter how ideal the room is, we can see some little failure here and here some small failures as well. And the frequency range you can see with the violet color that we, we corrected with the mini DSP processor. And here are the result before and after. Now it is how it is now. Almost reference. This is how it looks now after the DSP correction.